So there is a there there is a class of social activists and Muslim intellectuals which still argues for you know dialogue on this whole issue out of court settlement or uh, there's also a class which says that still there is a possibility of talk on this issue. What do you think about it? You see, they had dialogues which failed. They failed for a specific reason. And the dialogues today, without any uh, particular formula, will not, have, will not let you go anywhere. What we are saying is this. Let the final uh, rights of the two parties be decided at the highest level. Then we shall know where we stand, where they stand. And at that stage, surely if there is a, a move for a sort of a settlement out of court, we can engage in it because then we shall know what we can give and what they have to give. But without that, in this situation, which is everything is fluid, uh, how do you talk? Today, a uh, dialogue will mean they are those who are asking for dialogue are really asking for surrender. But but suppose it's it's a one of the prominent possibilities. But suppose if Supreme Court affirms High Court's view, you know the, the then they, there's no possibility of dialogue. I mean, they 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 already got the land. They won't agree for the dialogue. No, the dialogue is not the possibility after Supreme Court's affirmation of the judgment, even right? If the Supreme Court okay is the High Court judgment, they have to have a dialogue with us because they want to build a great Hindu temple there. And with one third of the original masjid in our hands, how can they do that? We cannot build a, rebuild the old masjid, but they cannot fulfill their dream either. So there is a scope, even if Supreme Court okays the High Court. Okay, there is also one view that uh, you know let's let's leave the land. I mean, be, be, and let's be gracious. Let's let's because there are possibilities that. After the Supreme Court's verdict, we don't have the face to, to sit and talk, you know. Uh, because we already have, uh, you know, the, 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 the main place of the contention has already been provided to the, to the Hindu side, the Ram Lila's place. So, so the point is that we still have got some face, you know, we still have got some space. We can, we can talk to them and then, you know, why, why, to talk, why, why to fight over this small piece of land? These are two different questions we are asking. Yeah. The, the point is, there is a possibility of a dialogue when they are prepared to give something and we are prepared to give something. Then there can be a settlement out of it. But otherwise, as it is today, the judgment in my opinion is impracticable. It cannot really be implemented. Or it will be very difficult to implement. And it does not satisfy all the Hindu groups that were in the fight. The issue really is, there are some who are telling us, why are you fighting about Babri Masjid? Yeah. And the question that we have answered already, we are fighting for the Babri Masjid because as it is, during the partition holocaust, as you know, tens of thousands of masjids went out of Muslim hands. Some are still in non-Muslim hands. But that is a situation of compulsion. It is not a situation in which, in a secular state, a, a judicial authority does you out of your property. So that is why it was important. When Babri Masjid issue arose in 1986, there was a list of 300 masjids all over the country which the Sangh Parivar wanted to convert into, into Temple. temples. And we decided we cannot give up the Babri Masjid. We cannot isolate the Babri Masjid. We have to fight for the Babri Masjid for the simple reason that if we allow this flood to demolish the Babri Masjid, then all of our 300 or how many thousand masjids will not be safe. Even even Jami Masjid, Delhi was was uh, you know under uh, under under their onslaught. That's right. Okay, but but you know, I mean, okay, let's talk about importance of this issue, Abhi. People say that the community is under under tremendous pressure because of other. There are lots of other problems, uh, you know. And this is, and you know, really, if 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 you if you know, I talk to many youngsters. They they said, "Okay, it doesn't matter, Abhi. It doesn't matter in these days." Life, my dear, is very very complex. You cannot take just one aspect of life. And the Indian Muslim community is 150 million strong. And I'm, I dare say that there will always be some people who are more concerned about their career and about their future and about living well with their neighbors and so on and so forth. 
and for them really religion does not matter. What I am talking about is the uh, possibility of Muslims living in India not only as citizens but as equal citizens, as uh, a religious community and it is their dignity which is involved. And that is why we took up the Babri Masjid issue in 1986 and that is why we shall carry it on up to the last end, that is the final judicial verdict. Beyond that, as I told you already, it is God's will, it is not in human hands. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank, <laughs> thanks a lot. Thanks a lot.